What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the second video of this project series. In the past video we have talked about the two options that we have to build our brush drone. The first one is using a prototyping drill PCB like this one and the other one is designing our own PCB. I've already talked about how to design this PCB, how to solder the SMD components, burn the bootloader and upload the code. So today we will build the flight controller for this brush drone using a prototyping drill PCB like this one with an Arduino Pro Mini. By the way, if you want to complete this project you will also need the radio controller that we have built in the past tutorial, with an Arduino and an Unref24 module inside. So please check the video in the description if you want to see how I build this controller. You could use any controller that you have like this one that I bought from a secondhand store or maybe use some joysticks like this one and create your own radio controller. Before we begin the tutorial I want to say that I want to make a kickstarter of this project when everything works perfect. I've designed the board for the transmitter and for the flight controller. I already have a few versions of this board, even one with the shape of a drone, so you don't have to build a body anymore. It will be in the form of a kit, where you will receive the boards and all the components that you need to complete this project. This kit will be just for learning purposes, since any commercial pocket drone will cost you around 40 bucks. So please share your opinion of the idea of a kickstarter on this project, where you will get a kit and all the components to be solder and you will learn more about drones, electronics and so on. So today we will build this brush drone as you can see here with the prototype in drill PCB and the Arduino Pro Mini, so let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back! As we have seen in the past video we will use a plastic 3D printed body for the drone. And by the way, you have the printing STL files below. It has to be very light. If you don't have a big 3D printer, in the description you will find a template that you could print on a piece of paper and cut the frame out of foam or maybe thin plywood. It doesn't have to be very very strong, since the entire drone will weigh around 100 grams. Each arm will have one of these plastic gears in order to increase the propeller thrust. Inside of each of these supports we will have our DC motor. So all we need now is the flight controller in the middle with a LiPo battery. So let's build it. You might want to have the schematic in front of you while soldering, so you won't miss any step. The first thing I do is solder the MPU6050 in place, as centered as we can. As you can see I don't use PCB pins, in order to save some weight. Just solder the module onto the PCB with some thin wires. Next I solder the Arduino Pro Mini and make the connection for the I2C communication with the IMU module. Data its analog pin A4 and clock its analog pin A5. I also connect ground and VCC pins. Now it's time to add the radio module. I place it a little bit onto the side so we won't have too much interferences. I make all the connections for the SPI communication, which are chip enable, chip select, clock, master output and master input pins, which in this case will be digital pin 7, 8, 13, 11 and 12 from the Arduino Pro Mini. I also connect ground to the radio module, but I don't connect the 3.3 volts yet, since for that I first need the voltage regulator and I will leave that component for the end. It's time to solder the small MOSFETs for each motor. Depending on how we have placed the IMU, we know that that side will be the front part of the drone, and this is very important when soldering the PWM pins. So pay attention! We will have digital pin 3 on the top left motor, digital pin 6 on the top right, D5 on the bottom left and D9 on the bottom right motor. 
solder the MOSFET and add a Schottky diode at its drain. Between the source and the gate of the transistor, we will add a 10 kilo ohms pull down resistor. Now connect the source to ground. The cathode side of the diode will be connected to the battery positive input and to one wire of the DC motor. The other wire from the motor will be connected to the anode of the diode. We do the same for all of the four MOSFETs. Now we connect digital pins 3, 5, 6 and 9 to the gates of the MOSFETs and we are done. Remember I soldered the 3.3 voltage regulator, add an input capacitor and an extra capacitor to the NRF24 module, the pins for the battery and we are ready for the code. To upload the code I've used once again this FTDI programmer which you could buy for only 99 cents. Now the code for this part of this video series is once again a multi-wee platform since I'm still working on my own code which is not easy at all. The multi-wee code had to be adapted to receive data using the NRF24 module instead of a commercial radio receiver. So for that I have to thank to the iForce 2D YouTube channel. I've downloaded the code from his page and made a few small adjustments. So once again thank you and make sure you visit his channel, links are below as always. So download the multiwi zip file that you have in the description below. Extract it. Inside you will have the multiwi code and the multiwi java application for 32 and 64 bits. Open the multiwi code with the Arduino IDE. As you can see is the same code as in the past tutorial, but now we have the unref24.c file here. Let's first go to this file and make sure that the chip enable and the chip select are pin 7 and 8 for the radio module. Next make sure that the pipe code is the same that we have used in the transmitter tutorial. If you watched that video, as you remember we define a pipe and we send 6 channels. 4 channels for the joystick's value of the controller and 2 more channels for the extra switches that we have here. Those 6 channels had the name of throttle, yaw, pitch roll, aux1 and 2. So the first thing we have to do is to go to the unref 24 cpp file and change the name of channel 5 and 6 to aux1 and aux2. There you go. Now we scroll a bit downwards and here in the while loop as you can see we receive only 4 channels. But I want to receive the data for the two switches as well. For that I add these two lines of code and map the boolean value from 0 and 1 to 1000 and 2000 microseconds. Now we go in the unref24.h file and change the name of the auxiliary switches here as well and we are done with this part. In the config.h file we have to make sure that we have selected the quad x type of copter and the independent sensor we have to uncommon the MPU6050 sensor which is the one that we will use. Ok, so we upload the code and we will see the first error. The code works as in the past tutorial but there is a problem. The PWM output from the board has a range from 1000 to 2000 microseconds as we can see here on my oscilloscope. That's perfect for brushless motor control since almost all of the electronic speed controllers work with that range. But if we apply this signal to our MOSFETs the motors will always be on since the signal is never totally off. So what I want is a range from 0 to 100%. For that we go to the output CPP file. This is the part of the code responsible of the output signals. Here is what we have to do. Type Ctrl F and open the find tab. Here type Pro Mini since that is the controller that we are going to use. Ok, so we know that right now the minimum PWM value is 1000. So what I've made in order to achieve the zero is subtract 1000 from each motor value and multiply the result by 2 in order to get the entire range from 0 to 100% of the PWM. I upload the code once again and now as you can see I've got values from 0 to 100%. Great! The code that you have below in the description it's already prepared so you don't have to change anything to it. So connect the FTD module to the wire pins of the Arduino Pro Mini. Compile and upload the code. 
Now open the MultiWid Java application and see if everything works ok. With the Arduino connected to the FTA module and the module to the PC, select the COM and start the communication. As you can see, it detects the controller and the movements of my drone. Now start the Arduino based radio transmitter and see if I receive the 6 channels. And yes, the connection works as well. I select horizontal mode when AUX1 is high and angle mode when AUX2 is high. Click right to upload the new settings. If your channels are inverted, all you have to do is to go to the anorf 24 cpp file and invert the map values. Now put throttle to 0 and yaw to maximum for 3 seconds. As you can see the arm tag is now green and the motors are activated. Now when I increase the throttle, the motors will start spinning. Make sure you have the motor spinning in these directions and that the propellers are pushing air downwards. If a motor is spinning in the wrong direction, all you have to do is to swap the wires from the motor one to each other. So guys, the drone works, but unfortunately it doesn't fly. That's because while soldering the motors, I broken some wires, since they are very fragile. So I had to use a different size motor that I had so now the drone is not balanced and doesn't have enough power since the motors don't have the same amount of RPMs. Also the printed drone body has 50% infill so maybe it's a little bit heavy. So guys I'm very very sorry but till I get the new motors that I've ordered this project is paused here. We have built the flight controller. Change the code to suit our requirements, upload the code and test if it works. As you can see, the gyro and acceleration control works here on my multi-width platform. I received the channels from the radio transmitter and when I put throttle to zero and yaw to maximum, I activate the motors. Now I start increasing the throttle and the motors are spinning. I'm not sure if you are able to see on the video but the white propellers have way more power than the red ones due to the different type of motors that I was forced to use. Anyway, the control works. You are free to improve this project as you want. I will try to make the drone even lighter using foam board and barbecue wood sticks like this one here. So stay tuned for the next part of this video series. If you want to build your own drone and learn something on the way, please check my webpage below for more details. You also have the schematics and examples in the description. If my tutorials help you and you would like to have my projects like this one, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below as always, I would really appreciate that guys. I hope that you enjoyed this second video of the series. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.